I was making a nice video discussing the famous Ica stones, and if they were authentic or not. And then you showed up. You see, this is why we can't have nice things. You may or may not have heard, but yesterday or two days ago, depending on when this video is uploaded, a scientific paper examining some skin impressions on Tyrannosaurus rex was published. The skin impressions were from the Wyrex specimen, which has been long known to possess some well-preserved scale impressions that were until recently only referenced in rumors. You may recall I even addressed them in my Did T-Rex Have Feathers video. Well, the internet went crazy when a scientific paper examining these impressions was published. News outlets and media sites went nuts, claiming the paper disproves feathered tyrannosaurs entirely and resurrects the entirely scaly and lizard-like Rex from the days of Jurassic Park. Even Twitter promoted it as its top story by saying, just as you were getting used to the idea of giant fluffy killer birds, nope, still lizards. Headlines like, just say no to the feathered tyrannosaurs, and T-Rex was no feathered dino, are running rampant right now. Many people celebrated like they won some sort of sports team or something. Needless to say, the situation's a mess, and I think my friend Franz sums it up best in his tweet, the headlines are killing my sanity. I feel like it's my obligation to do some damage control on the condition of T-Rex and break down what the discovery actually means without the sensationalism of the news. So, the discovery in actuality to anyone who read the scientific paper instead of just reading a blog post about it changes very little and is far from what the sensationalized headlines claim. Most of the tiny, and I mean tiny, skin impressions are primarily in locations we already knew to be commonly scaly and even feathered dinos such as the tails, legs, and underbelly, and thus doesn't really change anything, having no ruling on feathers whatsoever. The only sections that were previously unknown are scales on the ilium, upper hip, and neck. However, the position of scales on the neck remains relatively vague, as the paper doesn't really go into where exactly they are located. The paper itself was riddled with errors. They even used the common but nonetheless mistaken elephant comparison that I meticulously debunked in my video. The author claims that tyrannosaurs might have lost their feathers to help with heat regulation and makes the same dumb comparison to mammalian hair on elephants. I'd expect from a layman. As said before, feathers do not equal fur, and they have very different thermal and regulatory properties, with feathers actually helping cool an animal down, the complete opposite to what the authors claim. The paper additionally fails to address that feathers can exist intermixed with scales, as it does in many, many dinosaur species, both extinct and still living, meaning just because there are scale impressions doesn't rule out filaments entirely. In fact, it's pretty common for dinosaurs to exhibit this trait. Again, this is common knowledge, and it's pretty bad that the authors of the paper didn't recognize this. Just in general, the paper treats feathers and scales like they are mutually exclusive or a zero-sum game. However, again with many dinosaur species extinct and still living, both feathered and scaly regions on the body coexisting is very, very common. Even the incredibly fluffy Tyrannosaur U. Tyrannus had scaly sections on its body. For instance, a patch or two of scales on the underside of its almost entirely feather-covered tail. Lastly, it's important to keep in mind that the skin impressions are exceptionally isolated and tiny, no bigger than a postcard, on an animal that is 40 feet long. They leave almost the entirety of the T-Rex ambiguous, definitely not enough information to conclusively say anything about the rest of the animal. It's like saying buzzards or emus are completely featherless by basing it entirely on a few skin patches here and there. Tyrannosaurus rex and similar tyrannosaurs still very likely possessed a partial covering of feathers, and the authors of the paper even admit this by suggesting Tyrannosaurus rex possessed a feather cape and probably had feathers running along its back or dorsum, not to mention possibly having feathers intermixed with scales in other regions of the body. So no, it does not disprove feathered T-Rex, much of the body remains very possibly feathered. The discovery's impact is minimal at best, and some paleo artists like Gabriel Ugueto and Darren Niche don't even have to alter their artwork to fit with the new discovery, as their feathered Rex illustrations remain accurate even in accordance to the new evidence. Saurian's Tyrannosaurus Rex needs only to be altered rather slightly. The discovery only changes our view of T-Rex marginally at best, and most definitely is not the slam dunk case against feathered T-Rex, many media sources claim. The biggest problem with the story is how the media broadcasted it. We've got another example of awful science journalism, with the media in this case being especially misleading by having completely mishandled the story by sensationalizing the hell out of it, by creating misleading headlines and over-exaggerations of the actual findings. People seem to be so desperate to get their scaly Jurassic Park Rexes back that they are willing to completely ignore the truth and pander to their audience. This is literally fake news, blowing reality entirely out of proportion and jumping to great assumptions without reasonable evidence. 
in contradiction to what the actual scientists have to say. The attitudes towards scientists themselves in many of these news posts, as well as responses from readers, are just inappropriate and wrong. Oftentimes reprimanding scientists for even suggesting their childhood movie monster heroes could even have had feathers. Saying the silly paleontologist should have just listened to Jurassic Park the entire time and never have proposed otherwise. It exposes one of my biggest critiques of modern journalism, and that is its commonness to distort the truth, which is especially common whenever they report science topics. In short, the recent discovery pretty much puts us exactly where we were before on how widespread the feathering of large tyrannosaurs was, with the partially feathered, partially scaly rex still very plausible. Additionally, the science media needs to get their act together and make sure they thoroughly research a topic before you report on it. I am extremely disappointed in how they handled this story. The real crime here is the fact that this entire fixation on the T-Rex scales is drawing all the much-needed attention away from a way cooler discovery of a primitive proto-bird chick stuck in amber. The chick truly is one of the best preserved fossils we have at that time period, capturing some truly awe-inspiring detail and certainly deserves much more attention from the press than the other pretty much insignificant discovery. So please stop fixating on it and look at the cool stuff. Anyways, this has been Trade the Explainer, thanks for watching. My next Ica Stones video should be out very soon because I'm almost done with the script.